Hello, and welcome to AI Curious. My name is Jeff Wilser. I'm a journalist, I'm a human, and I am excited to launch the debut episode of The Weekly Edge, a short, punchy roundup of AI news. The target audience is you. Yes, you. You're busy, you're curious about AI, you want to stay abreast of key developments in the space, but real talk, you don't want to spend like that much time doing it. This format is for you. Digestible, quick, punchy. So in the spirit of not wasting your time or effing around, let's dive right in. Our main story this week is the rise of humanoid robots, or even butler robots. Okay, so maybe rise is a bit exaggerated and clickbaity, but there's more and more evidence that when it comes to robots, behind the scenes, we're gradually moving from science fiction to science-fueled capitalism. The latest data points. This week, a startup called Weave Robotics announced they are taking pre-orders for what they called Isaac, or the first personal robot built for the home, and that it will be shipping in 2025. Isaac is designed to do things like cleaning your home and fold your laundry. The team released a video that notably did not show this robot butler truly in action, but instead an animated rendering of Isaac picking up Legos and giving a dog a bowl of water and bringing wine glasses to a, to a happy couple. Maybe they're happy, who knows. How does Isaac work? Who knows? We don't know a ton of details. Here's what we do know. If you want to reserve your own little butler robot, that will cost you a cool $1,000 deposit. If you want to buy it in 2025, that will cost $59,000 or around one Bitcoin. But we also know that Weave is backed by the famed Y Combinator, the VC slash incubator that does have a track record of launching companies like Airbnb, DoorDash, Stripe, Twitch, and on and on. Now, this is not to say it's a slam dunk that the robot butler will be a hit. Most startups fail, but they do have a very credible backer. Now, this, of course, is not happening in a vacuum. It comes on the heels of some other robot news from larger players in the AI space. OpenAI has invested in a company called Figure that's building humanoid robots. Figure also has some powerful friends. Other investors include Microsoft and NVIDIA. Now, Figure has been posting occasional video updates that are not just animations and renderings, but they show actual progress. They show an actual robot that you can speak to. And you can ask it things like, put some dishes in a drying rack. And it does this very slowly, very awkwardly. It's so slow and awkward that if this robot was your actual human housekeeper, you would feel guilty and you'd wrestle on this, but you would eventually fire them because they're that bad. But still, it's real, it's progress. One video update from the, the figure two line of robots showed it walking awkwardly a bit like a, like a cowboy, kind of wide-legged. As one YouTube commenter said, getting them to walk like they've soiled their pants is genius, makes them less threatening. <laughs> and of course, there's one more giant player in the robot space, Tesla and Elon Musk. And Musk, of course, is trying to be a player and get his hands in everything. I'm kind of shocked Elon hasn't asked to join my fantasy football league. Tesla's Optimus robot is very much in development. And Musk has said that Optimus could replace the car as their primary product. He also suggested that Tesla could be cranking out 1 billion robots. Then again, Musk has been predicting that we'll have full self-driving cars since 1997. So don't hold your breath. So to sum up on the robot front, on the one hand, a 2025 robot butler for $59,000 shows just how far away this is from becoming mainstream. On the other, cutting edge tech usually does start with wildly expensive prototypes that eventually gets cheaper. For perspective, in the 1930s, the first TVs you could buy had a 12 inch black and white screen and they cost over $400 
in 1930s or around $10,000 in 2024. My take, I don't think robots are imminent, but I do think they will become extremely mainstream in the next few-ish years. Oh, and here's my bonus prediction. I think the company that eventually cracks the code on making robots mainstream will be none other than Apple. And speaking of Apple, that gets us to the second segment of the episode. There are only two segments. And the second of two segments is three quick things. Yep, we are out of ideas. We are literally just calling it three quick things. Quick thing number one, as you've probably heard, Apple just shared more details about the new iPhone 16, which of course will incorporate AI for Apple intelligence. In their announcement, they did not once use the phrase artificial intelligence. And many people in the space seem to think it's pretty ho-hum and that Apple even has been towards the rear of the pack when it comes to AI and playing catch up. What a lot of folks forget though, is Apple is almost never first to market, but when they do things, they do them very, very well. I am old enough to remember the original iPhone. On paper, most of the specs weren't that different from other products out there. There were other phones, even back in 2006, 07, that let you send photos and messages. They had cameras in their phones. But the iPhone was the first one that let you do it in a seamless way, in an easy way, it even made these features fun. My bet is that Apple will do the same with AI features, and Apple will instantly onboard hundreds of millions of people to the world of AI, whether they know it or like it or not. Number two, there is more AI-fueled misinformation just in time for election season. Now, the full backstory here is way out of scope of AI Curious, but there's a flood of images from Donald Trump sort of cuddling like kittens and ducks. One of these photos was even shared by the Republicans' official House Committee on the Judiciary with a caption, quote, protect our ducks and kittens in Ohio, unquote. Now, these images are pretty clearly jokey, and they are probably not going to move the needle in the election. But to be honest, deep fake misinformation is one of my darkest fears of AI, and I have a sinking feeling that in the next two months, before election day, we will have an ugly episode made possible only by AI. And last, number three, for over a year, AI Nerdland has been desperately waiting for the next real update from OpenAI. Will that be ChatGPT5? Probably not, but the information reports that in the next two weeks, OpenAI will release a major update with a code name of Strawberry. Now, we don't know a ton, but the information sources tell them that the main feature will be that before it gives you an answer, it will take 10 to 20 seconds to think, which gives it the ability to do more complex reasoning and perhaps be less likely to hallucinate. That could be a major breakthrough. But even if it's not my take, honestly, if an AI chatbot truly waits 10 seconds to think and reflect before saying something dumb, then AI has indeed already passed human level intelligence. And that will do it. That's it for AI Curious, The Weekly Edge. We'll be back later this week with our normal long form Q&A. And from this point forward, you can expect, with some exceptions, two episodes each week, this short form briefing on Mondays and the long form interviews on Thursday. If this is your first time at AI Curious, welcome. Please consider subscribing at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. And if you were listening to this podcast, do consider checking out our YouTube channel where these are all now legit video friendly. Thanks again and see you next time.